カーディスクレイ、マイカーディスクレイ、マイカーディスクレイ、マイカーディスクレイ、Give me good health, マイカーディスクレイ、マッサークセス。You know, get limits, everything you 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 know, get limits. You know, limit. My family members, not so so shine, oh, birthday people, not so so shine, oh, everything you know, get limits, everything you know, get limits, everything you know, get limits, you know, get limits. ジオバファイネエジオバファイネエジオバファイネエジオバファイネテレンボカテレンボカゴダンテレンボカテレンボカゴダンテレンボカテレンボカテレンボカテレンボカパンダコマパンダパンダパンダえージオバファイネ、I tell you today。ジオバファイネ、へへへへへへへへ。マイガーディグルン、えへへへ。マイガーディグルン。It puts my for my face, マイガーディグルン。It give my sister plus one, マイガーディグルン。Everything you know get limit, everything you know get limit, everything you know get limit, everything you know get limit. But husband and wife now one one no. My God is good, eh? 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 He had a brother. For w o l family, this same 13, 13 October, everything you know, get limit, everything you know, get limit, everything you know, get limit, everything you know, get limit. He give with George family, you know, get limit. He give with brand new nephew, you know, get limit, everything you know, get limit, everything you know, get limit, everything you know, get limit. So let's get to pray. This is a chapter a day before you go.、Um, I know some people don't know what we're doing here. If you're a new person, if you're coming here for the first time, this is a chapter a day. And all this is about is to get you to know the Word of God for yourself and get on the Alutia Word of God because we read the Word before we talk about what we've learned in the Word. So, in the process, you can also tell us what the Holy Spirit is ministering to you. That's the main reason why we all go to church every time, but people are ministered to individually because God tweaks the message. To minister to you as per what you're desiring from Him and the questions you're asking Him. So, we can come to church today and the pastor preaches about John、uh, on the scripture of John 3 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. God is going to be teaching someone who is hurting about love. God is going to be teaching someone who 
um, needs to make a sacrifice to someone about sacrifices. Giving your only begotten son is a big sacrifice, a huge sacrifice. And God is going to be telling some people, I still love you. And that's why I sent my son to come and die for you. Even I know that I knew that there is a possibility that you might not say yes to whatever I'm giving you as a gift. So the Holy Spirit ministers to us differently based on our specific needs, even though we're dining from one table. So that's what a chapter a day is all about. We're making a, an audio Bible in the process, audio Bible right by me. I'm sure you want to listen to my voice. <laughs> That's by the way. I'm sure you want to listen to the audio Bible. I have an audio Bible that is not made by me, but um, I was instructed to make this one that is done by me. It's not like super, super professional. The times you, you would hear me repeat a word, the times you would hear me skip something or something like that, but it's the Bible. You would have to study the Bible. So we'd have no excuse as to why we didn't study the Bible. You know, I also had this excuse of why I wasn't studying the Bible, because sometimes when you get all caught up with work, you start doing stuff, you really cannot sit down and read the Bible because you don't have the time. But if you are caught up with all this stuff, you can still listen to the Bible because you can put your wireless Bluetooth earphones. You can even put your earphones in. Like sometimes I'm feeling great on the computer. I can actually be feeling the grades and listening to the Bible. Sometimes you say it doesn't really matter. It matters. Those things that you're listening to, they actually get to stay in your subconscious. And when the time comes, the Holy Spirit is going to bring it to your remembrance. That's why you need to listen to it. So sometimes I sleep, I sleep through the word of God or I sleep through gospel music because it's actually given an aura around you. It's actually coming with a presence. It has this presence, you know like that so we need to be very cautious of what we're doing what we're hearing what we're watching what we're listening to and all those kinds of things is very important and that's why we're doing a chapter a day so let's get to pray and hand over the session to god and then we start off with the birthday party i'm so excited i just wanted to start birthday before pray lord we thank you for this amazing beautiful day that you've given to us the day you've made we we'll rejoice and be glad in it, O Lord. Father, I pray that you speak to us today. Address each and every one of us at our point of need. We've come to dine with you, O Lord. We've come to sup with you. We know that you always give us at every point in time a balanced diet to cause us to grow and grow in the way that you desire that we should. Father, we just bless your holy name. We'll magnify you. We'll give you all the praise because you deserve it. Take glory, Father. Take glory, Son. Take glory, Holy Ghost, now and forevermore. Even as we sit here today, we come together today to listen to your word of God. Let it go a long way to transform our lives. Let it go a long way to teach us, to guide us, to lead us, to direct us, to redirect us, to cause us to learn and unlearn and relearn, Lord, things that need to be done so. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Increase while I decrease. Let it be you and you alone that will be seen, felt, and heard throughout this session of a chapter a day. Let no eye of me be a part of this. Let me decrease as you increase. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Let's get to the birthday party. I've been waiting for this. Did I forget a birthday book? No, I didn't. Let's get to the birthday party. I'm just excited. And I just want to go straight up to my sister, but that's not going to work. She's going to be the last person. Because I'm going to say a lot, a lot about her. A lot. A lot. Okay, so the first person I'm going to say happy birthday to is Mr. Tanjo Aaron. Mr. Tanjo Aaron was my classmate. He's actually an awesome accountant, if I'm not mistaken. I hope I'm not mistaken. But we studied together at the, I think, high school level and the university as well. We studied together. He was very good. He's very smart. He's very calm and self-spoken. That one, I know. Okay, happy birthday to you, sir. And we have Mr. Yemi Akinto Kun. We also met on um, on Facebook. Um, he does really great works with designing and stuff like that, if I'm not mistaken. I hope I'm not mistaken. I'm not mixing up people because some names are really familiar. But I think we connected based on design. He did a very good design, and I wanted to design something for my um, organization as well. So I decided to get to him, if I'm not mistaken. But I know Mr. Yemi Kintokun, we actually connected on social media, Facebook. I think on a mutual friend's post and he was doing great so we had to connect if he's the one if not I guess he made a comment or he was replying or he made a post that was really intriguing and inspiring so I had to connect with him that's what I do on social media 
Okay, the next person we have is Mr. Samuel Obinwa. Mr. Samuel Obinwa is a friend of mine that we actually did a radio program together, um, Youth and Development, on the CBC radio when I was back in the country. And, uh, oh my God, these people were people who had fire. I mean, they have passion for God. They have, I mean, this crazy passion. You can't be around them and not love God. You can't be around them and not want to to propagate the gospel it, it was just not possible i mean i grew a lot while i joined that crew and how did i get to join i actually went to the market to buy something from this shop oh no i think they came to the radio because they were also doing it at the radio while i was working so they came to the radio and they told me that it would be nice if i can also join them on the other radio like CBC radio, I was working at Christian Gospel Radio and then they came to do a program on the Christian Gospel Radio and told me they have another program on the CBC radio, I can come because it's when it's my off time. It's it's not like it's my work time that they expected me to come there, it was my off time. So I started going there and it was really, really beautiful. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Samuel for actually connecting me to those amazing people. I really am grateful and for giving me an opportunity to be a blessing to the world, okay? The next person is Mam Nimi. Nimi. Um, I've forgotten her other name. <laughs> oh my God. I'm, I'm really, I'm really, really, really sorry about that. But Mam Nimi is actually an, an awesome lady, multi skilled, a virtuous woman. I mean, like fabric, fabric craft. That's the name of her um, business or her organization or her company. Fabric craft and fabric craft does a lot of things. It trains people. It produces very beautiful Ankara stuff. You know, bringing our Africanness to the world and to reality. I really love that. I learned from her once when we had a certain training. I learned a lot from her, and I did some. Uh, oh, I I didn't even remember it was her today. I would have done one of the um, all round necklace that. I made after learning from her. I learned a lot of things from her. So I have this um, Ankara necklaces, Ankara, I think bracelets or hairbands or belts and stuff like that. Yeah, I got some of those things and I learned from her. Thank you so much, Mam Nimi. And then we have Mr. Franklin Titang. Oh my God, Mr. Franklin Titang is an amazing friend of mine. And we went to school together, like high school, university, and then we're also in this amazing group of very smart people and why in our excellent group mr franklin Tita is very smart he deals with ngos like he he just knows a whole lot about ngos and he is so good at what he does really really good i mean like i'm not just blowing his trumpet here i don't flatter people it's true he is so good at what he does and of course Sometimes people don't think he's African because he's not dark. <laughs> Mr. Tiktok Frank, Mr. Tiktok Franklin, happy birthday. <laughs> Are you an African or not? Tell us, let's know. Happy birthday to you, Mr. Frank Titang. And uh, he's just art awesome like that, very smart, always looking out for people, wanting to help people be their best, always sending out opportunities that are available for people to get some really great jobs and awesome jobs i really like him for that thank you so much and god bless you and then we have sir priest king priest okay sir king priest actually we met on social media as well he was posting some really great stuff um godly things i'm just blown away by godly stuff so people who do a lot of godly stuff just get my attention you know you you really really do get my attention if you're doing things that connect with God, connect with the Word of God, connect with Christian things, yeah, things that can cause me to grow spiritually and stuff like that. So he was doing a lot of that on his page, and then we connected, and it was just beautiful. It has been great. Sometimes we're not so connected, 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 but whenever we connect, we connect well. So thank you so much for being your amazing self, Mr. Seeking Priest. That's actually his Facebook name. So we'll use that. We'll go with that. Everybody's going to know who I'm talking about. As opposed to using his real name. <laughs> and then the last but not the least is my kid sister. Judge Mills. I mean for the past days. So I have this thing where I celebrate my brothers and my sisters. And 
and some people who are really really close to my heart i celebrate them for like over a week for a week or, or more if i can so my kid brother and my kid sister are born in the month of october yeah so i started celebrating my kid sister on the 10th because i needed to let my kid brother's celebration flow through so i started celebrating my kid sister on the 10th like on the 10th i was posting her picture every single day no not a 10th i think the 11th or so i think the 9th or so i'm not sure but i started celebrating her earlier so i kept posting pictures of us together and people keep going like are you twins are you twins and i'm shocked these same people which me wished me happy birthday on my birthday which passed in july and here they are i'm celebrating my kids this day and celebrating and people keep going with are you a twin are you a twin like why would i ever celebrate my birthday and not celebrate it with my sister and my sister is not even helping matters because every time it's my birthday she actually puts a picture of me and herself so it feels like it's our birthday together <laughs> And yes, sometimes I do that too. Like on her birthday, like now my cover picture is both of us. So people kind of get confused as if we're doing the same birthday or something. But it's strange, people. Do we even resemble that much? Well, to tell you the truth, even sometimes my uncles get mixed up with us. <laughs> okay, so we're not twins. I'm the bigger one. She's the smaller one. And when I say we're not twins, a lot of people just automatically think she's the bigger one. No, sorry. No be for size. I'm the bigger one. <laughs> okay. This is my tweenie. We can fight for the world. We can quarrel for the world. We can talk for the world. I mean like, but she always looks out for me. She always looks out for me. Even though her hobby has come and taken my space, kind of. But it's allowed. It's allowed. At least that is allowed. It's for a good, it's for a good cause. So yes, today doubles as her birthday and her wedding anniversary. This is her fourth wedding anniversary. And they gave me my awesome little nephew called Marcelo, my little Brazilian man. When I always say little Brazilian man, people think I'm just saying that because his name is Marcelo. He's actually Brazilian. Oh yeah. So I'm really, really happy for you. Happy birthday, kid says. I love you, Skata. You know, no, like... I don't even know how to say it, but you know my heart. You know my heart for you. When it comes to you, oh my God, I can... Basically, when it comes to my family, I can fight and put myself all out there. That people know. Those who know me know that. So, I don't joke with my family. Please, you can do anything with me. You can say anything to me and all that. But when you say something about my family, oh my God, you just got me. You, you really got my attention. <laughs> okay so i i hate it when people say nonsense about god and i hate it when people say nonsense about my family members any of them even if they're doing nonsense i just hate it so if you want to really get my attention you should get to one of my family members and you would get my attention you would really get my attention <laughs> okay so that's me selling myself out happy birthday tweeny 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 of life yes and we keep doing all these tweenish things my dad used to do it when we were younger we grew up and started doing it at some point again we kind of put on the same clothes the same stuff it's only that i had dreads at some point and she cut it off so basically i i see why people get confused all the more because my dress was cut off. But when my dress was there, at least some people could figure out who is who. Like they could differentiate. That's a good thing. So let's go one more time. Happy birthday, Mr. Tanjo Aaron. Happy birthday, Sir King Priest. Happy birthday, Sir Yemi Akintokun. Happy birthday, Sir Samuel Obinua. Happy birthday, Sir Franklin Titang. Happy birthday, Mam Nimi. Um, happy birthday, George Mills. 20 of life. Okay. So let's pray for these people. You know, like, today I feel like I want to pray, like, pray, pray, pray. <laughs> Isn't that being unfair? Like, because my sister was born today. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm just happy. I'm really, really happy. I'm really happy. So let's pray. 
Lord, we bring before you all these amazing people who were born on this 13th day of October. Oh Lord, I pray that you're going to bless them. Bless them beyond all measure, oh God. Bless them beyond their reasonable understanding, oh Father, that they're going to be a blessing in their generation and beyond, oh God. Father, that they're going to increase in wisdom and statue gaining favor before God and before men. And anyone who comes in contact with them will rub off of the blessings that is flowing around them and within them, oh Lord. Let that blessing come upon them and shield them round about. So no weapon from the fashion against them shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, open the windows of heaven and rebuke every devourer from their lives. Clothe them with a the garment of praise, honor, and favor so that they're going to be able to do things that people will not be able to fathom because of your glory and your goodness in their lives, O oh God. Father, I pray that their gifts are not only going to put them before me, men, but before kings, that their gifts will make a way for them, that they are, they're going to shine brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to teach them how to make wealth. Teach their hands to prosper. Whatever they lay their hands on, Lord, prosper. Father, your word says that you teach us to prosper. Teach them to prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Teach their hands to war. Teach their fingers to battle in the mighty name of Jesus. You say, wherever we tread our feet upon, you give it to us as a possession. Grant them these places that they tread their feet upon as a possession in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you're going to open their eyes to know the strategies and methods to be able to fulfill their purpose smoothly and beautifully, that you're going to show it to them. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you're going to grant them the grace that is necessary to go through this additional year that you're giving to them, oh God. Father, write beautiful stories on the pages of their lives. Cause them to conquer, cause them to overtake, cause them to recover all in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that when they get to that point in fulfilling purpose, where they reach that level where they're overwhelmed, they're tired, they're exhausted, you're going to come through for them and hear, they'll hear a loud, clean, clear voice saying, this is the way walk that we need so they'll never stray apart. They're going to stay connected to you and they're going to stay on track in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I decree and declare that these ones and their eyes are going to be enlightened. The eyes of their understanding are going to be enlightened so that they'll be able to hear, see and understand you perfectly and do your will in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I decree and declare, O oh God, that these ones are going to know the truth. They're going to know the way, O oh God. Father, that they're going to be, they're going to manifest to the groaning nation that is waiting for the expectations of the sons of God, for the manifestation of the sons of God, O oh Lord. Father, that your glory is going to be revealed through them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that they're going to be trailblazers, pace setters, and world changers, O oh God. Cause them to go and conquer their world. Perfect all that concerns them, O oh Lord. Father, I pray that if you tarry to come, it's going to be blessings on blessings, and they're going to be giving testimonies on testimonies next year same time of your goodness of your favor your mercy and grace lord i pray of god even for my good sister who is not only having her birthday today lord that you're going to bless her family and bless every other couple that is married those who were born today and those who were who are not born this day who, who are married oh god i pray that you're going to bless their families you're going to give them understanding you're going to give them wisdom love and all that it takes to live a victorious and god ordained marriage oh god because when you created marriage it was created for good lord i pray that they're going to enjoy and not endure in the mighty name of jesus lord that you're going to cause them to so love each other that when they look back to this particular day it's going to be the day they loved each other the least because their love is going to grow from strength to strength and it's going to grow stronger father i pray oh god cause this ones to go and conquer the world lord wherever their destiny help us cause them to have no peace no rest until they do that which they were ordained to do in their lives if peradventure by their sheer words or actions or whatever knowingly or unknowingly they cause people who were supposed to be their destiny helpers to to drift away from them lord i pray you have mercy upon them and cause this destiny helpers to relocate them and i pray oh lord that they are also going to be they're also going to be able to see and understand those they're supposed to be destiny helpers to and help these people in a mighty way lord we know you're faithful father perfect all that concerns them Give them a sounds 126 state, a state of continuous laughter, a state of continuous awe, a state of continuous goodness, O oh Lord. We know you can do this and more. You say we should call on you and you answer us and show us great and mighty things which we've never known. Lord, I pray that you're going to do 
awesome things in the lives of your children today who were born on this 13th day of October. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. In their lives. Amen. 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 Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. 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 Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. 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 Hey, people. Let's get the Bible party. Get the Bible party started. Welcome, handsome Nanya, my daddy, and my son. Hope you're doing great today. Hope your little cute family is also doing great. And the little princess of the house. Hope she's doing great too. Well, I don't know about you today. It's a beautiful Wednesday. And I'm sure you had a great day so far. Well, my students had to come to school today to take their vaccine. Their pandemic, like there's a surge, it's increasing and stuff like that. So they're actually trying to get people to get a vaccine as many as possible. So they started with the older people and their, um, their like the people, like teachers, doctors, and all these people, the military, they had to start with all those people. And then now they're doing for the students. They, they said they're going to do for kids last, I think so, because they're not so vulnerable to the thing. Well, I don't know how it works, but that's what I've been hearing. So they started doing it for my students today. I'm saying that because I need our mobile phone to come on in. Let's get the Bible on. It has to load. <laughs> I forgot loading it out before. So, yeah, they're doing that. And uh, I'm also doing something interesting. I'm actually getting on a... I'm actually getting on a show soon, and I'm really happy about it. Very much happy about it. I'm so, so happy about it. So, today we're reading Genesis chapter 23, right? Is it 23 or 22? Well, let's get to find out. When we get there, we're going to know which one we're reading. I always get to see it. When I see it, I know what I read the previous day. Because I look at it and I'm like, oh yeah, this is familiar. But sometimes, you know, it might be familiar and we've not read it. <sighs> oh my God. Okay, so this doesn't want to open up. What's going on? It's still loading. Sorry, people. I'm really sorry about that. I was supposed to have opened this. I normally open this before we go to um, the birthday party. I think yesterday we read 22. But yeah, yesterday we read 22. I think we're talking about the temptation or something. Well, let me see. Let me see who read 23 too. I know we read 22 last time. Um, not sure how far last we did. If we're reading Genesis chapter 23 today, it has 20 verses. Let's see. No, we're reading chapter 24 because we read chapter 23 yesterday. And Sarah was 170 years old when he died. That's when they were going to bury her and all that. Yeah, so we've read this one. So today's chapter 24. We're going really fast. We're already almost half of Genesis. And I was thinking it was going to take a while. But God, when God gives you work and is with you, I mean, it just flows like there's no tomorrow. So today we're reading Genesis chapter 24. Wait a minute. Genesis chapter 24 has 67 verses. Jesus Christ. This is what we call long. Okay, let's get it on with. I didn't bring my bottle of water. I hope if I need it, I'll push this and go get my bottle of water and come back. So... Let's start reading. Genesis chapter 24 has 67 verses. Let's go. Ready or not, here I come. Genesis chapter 24. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant, 
of his house that rule over all that he had put I pray thee thy hand under my tie and I'll make thee swear by the Lord the God of heaven and the God of earth that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell but thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son unto my son Isaac and the seven said unto him, Peradventure the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land. Must I needs bring thy son again unto the land from whence thou camest? And Abraham said unto him, Beware that thou bring not my son thither again. The Lord God of heaven, which took me. This thing is freezing. It's not good. And Abraham said unto him, Beware thou that thou bring not my son thither again, the Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house, and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me, and that sway unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land, he shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. And if the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from, the, from this my oath. Only bring not my son thither again. And the seven put his hand under the tie of Abraham his master, and swear to him concerning that matter. And the seven took ten camels of the camels of his master, and departed. For all the goods of his master were in his hands, and he rose, and he arose, and went to Mesopotamia, unto the city of Nahor. And he made his camels to kneel down, without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water and let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac, and thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. And it came to pass, before he had done speaking, that, behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nao, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin, neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I'll draw water for thy camels also, until they have done drinking. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the throne, and ran again unto the wall to draw water, and drew all and drew for all his camels. And the man, wondering at her, held his peace, to wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. And it came to pass, as the camel had done drinking, that the man took a golden earring, earring of half a shekel weight, and two bracelets for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold, and said, Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? And she said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, which she bare unto Nahor. She said moreover unto him, We have both straw and provender enough and room to lodge in. And the man bowed his head and worshipped the Lord. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who had not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. And the damsel ran and told them of her mother's house these things. And Rebekah had a brother, and his name was Laban. And Laban ran out unto the man unto the well. And it came to pass, when he saw the earring and bracelet upon his sister's hand, and when he heard the words of Rebekah his sister, saying, Thus spake the man unto me, that he came unto the man 
that that he came unto the man and behold he stood by the camels at the well and he said come in thou blessed of the lord wherefore standest thou without for i prepared the house and room for the camels and the man came into the house and he ungird and he ungirded his camels and gave straw and provender for the camels and water to wash his feet and the men's feet that were with him and there were set meat before him to eat but he said i'll not eat until i have told my errand and he said speak on and he said i'm abraham's servant and the lord had blessed my master greatly and he is become great and he had given him flocks and heads and silver and gold and men seven and maid seven and camels and asses and Sarah is my and Sarah my master's wife bare a son to my master when she was old and unto him had he given all that he had and my master made me swear saying thou shalt not take a wife to my son of the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I dwell but thou shalt go unto my father's house and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son and I said unto my master peradventure the woman will not follow me and he said unto me the Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with thee and prosper thy way and thou shalt take a wife for my son of my kindred and of my father's house then thou shalt declare from the from this my oath when thou comest to my kindred and if they give not thee one thou shalt declare from my oath <coughs> sorry people I need water okay then thou shalt be clear from this my oath, when thou comest to my kindred, and if thou give not thee one, thou shalt be clear from my oath. And I came this day unto the world, and said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, if thou do press by my way which I go, behold, I stand by the wall of water, and it shall come to pass, that when the virgin cometh forth to draw water, I say to her, I say to her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water of thy pitcher to drink. And she said to me, Both drink thou, and I'll also draw for thy camels. Let the same be the woman whom the Lord had appointed out of my master's sons, out for my master's son. And behold, I had done speaking in my in mine heart. Behold, Rebekah came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder, and she went down unto the well and drew water, and I said unto her, Let me drink, I pray thee. And she, and she made haste, and let down her pitcher from her shoulder, and said, Drink, and I'll give thy camels drink also. So I drank, and she made the camels drink also. And I asked her, and said, Whose daughter art thou? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bare unto him. And I put the earring upon her face, and the bracelet upon her hands. And I bowed down my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. And now, if ye will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, that I may turn to the right hand or to the left hand. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceeded from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go, and let her be thy master's son's wife, as the Lord hath spoken. And it came to pass that, when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped the Lord, bowing himself down to the earth. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment, and gave them to Rebekah. He gave also to her brother, and to her mother precious things and they did eat and drink he and the men that were with him and tarried all night and they rose up in the morning and he said send me away unto my master and her brother and her mother said let the damsel abide with us a few days at the least ten after that she shall go and he said unto them hinder me not seeing the lord had prospered my way send me away that i may go to my master and they said will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. And they called Rebekah and said unto her, Will thou go with this man? And she said, I'll go. And they sent her 
And they sent away Rebekah their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. And they blessed Rebekah, and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands, of millions, and let thy seed possess the gates of those which hate them. And Rebekah arose, and had damsels, and they rode upon the camels, and followed the man. And the seven took Rebekah, and went his way. And Isaac came from the way of the well, Lahairoi, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the even tide, at the even tide. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lifted up the camel. For she had said unto the seven, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the seven had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And the seven told Isaac all things that, had, that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah. And she became his wife. And he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Wow, people, that wasn't so bad. I was thinking like it was going to be stressful, even though I choked around the, around some part of it. Okay, so let's go. What did you learn? What did you learn? What did you learn? People, what did you learn? Let's talk about it. What did you learn today? Well, I learned that sometimes we need to make covenants and this covenants get to happen the way we plan. And sometimes they just might not happen the way you plan them. I would get to a point where we'll talk about fleeces and I'll tell you a story about myself when I made a fleece at some point and what God said to me. Okay. So Abraham was making a vow and that's why today a lot of people, a lot of relationship have issues. They have problems and all that. In those days, I'm not saying that that's the perfect way, but it, it helped in those days, this it's like children were kind of betrothed when they were younger. You know, this family will see this one and say, oh, their daughter is a very good girl. She's very hardworking. And they'll say, okay, their son is this, 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 this. And then they'll just bring the family together and they'll get married. Basically, it feels like they were in one community. They were in one town. They were in one place. So they could easily see each other and know whatever everybody's doing, you know. And they were really like this. The communities were really close-knit, you know like that so it's, it's it's basically the same thing and that's why the bible says that we should not be unequally yoked together or unbelievers but today you see christians want to go into the world and want to take men from the world um men or women from the world and then try to force them and bring them into church and that's why today you barely know who is a christian and who is not because the whole place has been infiltrated you know because sometimes people just get excited when they hear about marriage they'll do anything and everything if a man says he wants to marry you and the only thing he wants you to do is to come to church won't you come to church lots of ladies will go to church if a woman says oh she'll marry you like you really like the woman and everything and she says she'll marry you and she says the only opportunity the only option is for you to attend their church and everything won't you attend church service you attend church service that's exactly what is happening in our generation today and we're surprised about the rate of divorce we're surprised about the rate of husbands killing their wives or wives killing their husbands or whatever is going on in the world right now we're surprised we shouldn't be we shouldn't be abraham insisted and he said over and over no don't take a wife of my son in this canaan no it's not gonna happen we know who these people are we've lived with them but we know how we know that these people are not the people that we should be marrying and intermarrying with go and take me a wife from my father's place he knew that his father's place there are some people that are way better it's just the same thing god took him out of there as bad as their place was it was way better than canaan so the bible says that um do do not take a a, a spouse out of the household of faith let the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with be in the household of faith but now there's also the funny thing where a lot of people go and live their lives especially men but the women have caught up with them now especially men most of them just go and live their life anyhow then when they want to marry they just come and find a humble nice sister church girl who loves god and everything and then 
they go with the person and then they are living their lives very well so now these sisters too have realized that oh some of these men they play them and then end up going to church to go and look for one sister so when they've reached the age of marriage too and they're desperate and they know that they're ready to marry they've reached that age they also start faking sistership and come to church so they meet each other most of the times they meet each other <laughs> which is fair enough you know you can't play with god's children god will not allow his children to fall for that except people who are not listening to god who are not listening to the will of god they're not listening to what god is saying those are mostly the people that would um fall for these things because when you're a child of god the holy spirit is going to tell you you're going to sense it you're going to be able to know that this person is faking it this person is not real this person just came here for this and this purpose and that's not where you should be that's not the kind of relationship you should be in so that one is is clear it's clean and clear we can be taking spouses from the places where god has told us not to because when we do the destruction is going to be glaring it's going to be like it's just going to be so clear there's going to be there'll be the clear difference like night and day you know how different that is right that's how it's going to be you see samson is a clear example of that taking a wife in the wrong place when you take a wife in the wrong place be ready for what comes with taking a wife in the wrong place so yeah samson's example is just perfect just pitch perfect he says no we're not the parents told him no we're not supposed to be taking a wife from there choose a wife from any 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 place else but not there he says this one pleased me well that was the devil that had already clouded his mind and blinded his eyes his selfish desires were overruling him they were overshadowing the real thing his his real 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 i mean like oh my god it's so sad but all is well so he made the vow and then he said what if what if the per the person doesn't want to come should he take the son back there no don't take him back there because god has given them a promise that they're supposed to be here sometimes the problem is we just want to be in places where we're not supposed to be because we think that maybe we're going to miss our we're going to miss the person that we have see God can move anybody from east, west, north, and south and bring to you. See, eh? mainstream media is telling us all kinds of things and they're saying all kinds of things. God is still faithful. God is still in the business of doing miracles. God is still in the business of, of moving people from east, west, north, and south for your sake. Whenever you need help, help is going to come from east, west, north, and south. I've heard of testimonies where people needed some financial help and all. God moves someone who never knew them. So, for example, I can be praying here and I'm saying, Lord, show me, Lord, speak to me and teach me something. And then there is someone somewhere who is praying and saying, Lord, I need this financial help I, or I need this kind of help. And God gives me the person's name, address and everything. And I send the help. People have had that kind of experience. So I tell you the truth, darling. God can still come up and tell you that this is the person god can move somebody from from right far away in africa god can move somebody right far away in america in europe wherever so don't be bothered about where you are people are telling you oh no 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 you're in this place hmm. nothing is even happening in that place nothing is even happening in that place god knows why he's keeping you there rebecca was in was in was in was in um um in in their land Rebecca was there and, and, and they said where he came from, where, where, where Abraham came from. Rebecca was there. But Isaac, who was supposed to marry her, was right out of the way in Canaan, was right, right, right far there, far, far there. And that's where he was supposed to have to, to be. That's where he was supposed to stay. He was not supposed to move from there, but he was still going to get his wife and a wife that God ordained. Even with being there. Because sometimes you look at some people and you're feeling like you, you, you get to displace yourself. There is something about divine positioning. Don't displace yourself. You can get to displace yourself and get in trouble instead. You know, People actually displace themselves because people say or they think that. Oh, America is kind of close to heaven. America has too many opportunities. God wants to bless you in Africa. You're moving to America. You're going to suffer. 
eh? you will suffer. There is something about divine positioning that is very important. And that's why you need to have a personal relationship with God so that you know what is happening. You're not just going to go with mainstream media. You're not just going to go with what the media is showing to you. I actually took a picture somewhere, some place that was not looking so nice. And people were like, are you back home? I'm like, why would you all think that it's only home that has this kind of places? These people are not going to be showing. It's only mostly Africans, most Africans who will be showing every and anything. We want the world to see the good parts of Africa. And we are not showcasing those good parts. How do we expect them to know? These people have a way of branding and making even the bad parts of their country look good. That's exactly what we should be doing as well. But we're not doing it. We expect people to do it for us. No. Do it for yourself. And that's why a friend of mine has created an application where you can advertise your business for free. Now it's free. You don't know how soon it's going to get to be a paid version. You would have to get to pay to, to be able to be listed on that application. And I'm telling and pleading with people and telling all my friends who have businesses to go get themselves listed and some people are just acting up like seriously anyways and soon they'll say oh there are no opportunities available do you know how many people can get to see you on there and do business with you if people don't know that your business exists how are they going to do business with you well that's by the way divine position is very important so uh, Abraham insisted that no, he wasn't going to leave Canaan because God has promised that they're going to stay in Canaan. They're going to be in Canaan. So there's a possibility that if he decides to move, if Isaac decides to move, the procedure for bringing him back to Canaan wasn't going to be funny. And considering the fact that God has said he's given them Canaan, why would he be moving from there instead? Anybody who needs to meet him will come and meet him there. So there are some people that want you to break your values to, to be able to relate with them, to be able to be with them. Why? No. No, I always say that being my friend is easy, but staying my friend is the hard part. Because if you come and you get to know me and you don't like the me that you see, you would have to bounce. It's not me bending or breaking rules. I did it before. It didn't help me. It actually got me into depression. So I ain't about getting in that state again for nobody. No, 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 no. If you don't like this Jesus freak of a girl that you're seeing right here, then bounce. You have no business being my friend. I'm unapologetic about that because it's the truth. It's the same thing. If I come to you and I, I get to be friends with you and then I realize that you're not the kind of person that I'm going to grow spiritually or grow or grow myself or become better by, I bounce. I do. So it's the same thing. It's not by force. So there's some people that are not even supposed to be in your life because they might make you get to lose the, the, the blessings that God has for you because they change your position. They get you to swap your positions and stuff like that. So I'm telling you the truth. It's very, very important. It, um, Isaac was not supposed to move. He had to stay there because God had told them that that's where he was supposed to stay. But some people go all over the world just to look for a spouse. If your spouse is supposed to meet you, they'll meet you wherever they're meeting you. This one is even funny enough because they went and carried the lady and brought her over. And it's supposed to have been the man who is looking for. Anyways, it was the man who sought. It was the man who went and sought for her. Okay. And then another thing that I noticed is that these people were really, really praying people. Even after they've decided, they've discussed, and they've talked about things, you know, they still pray. Abraham prayed for his um, servant and sent him away. When the servant went as well, he prayed for himself. If he didn't have a relationship with God, he would not have had, maybe he would not have prospered like that. Or maybe it would not have been that easy for him, you know, like that. Prayer really eases things. It makes things easier. I am telling you because I'm a living and a walking testimony. Since I started making it a point of view or point of note to leave things in God's hands, to leave things in God's hands, it has been beautiful. I mean like beautiful and really, really easy and stress-free. So he went along and he prayed and he said this, 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 and God showed him. So this is something about fleeces. Sometimes we make fleeces, they don't work. Because even the enemy can actually flash a fleece in your face and you think it's God. Meanwhile, it's not. Fleeces kind of, um, from my own side, this is what God told me. Fleeces is for babies. So when you're still a baby Christian... He would, he would 
accept you, acknowledge all your fleeces, but he gets to a point where he expects you to be grown enough to know his voice and not need any fleece and not need any kind of extra thing to, you know, I used to be that kind of person when I got saved. Oh my God, father, if you know that you want me to do this and this and this, let this and this and this happen. Oh, let it rain today. Or let this person wear a green dress. You know, you know, some of those kinds of things that are seemingly like impossible. Of course, it's supposed to have been like the, the ladies just come to carry water to the house. Not like they are the ones actually, um, given the sheep or the, 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 the cattle water to drink. They just come to the well in the evening and carry water. But now there are some of these ladies who go the extra mile and do it. And that was, that was, that was Rebecca. You need, they spoke about the six, the 10 wise virgin, the 10 virgins, the 10 virgins. And then five were wise, five were foolish. What was it about this? All of them were virgins because someone will be saying that, oh, so it means, uh, no, all of them were virgins, but they were virgins that had extra oil. You need to go the extra mile. It's not just about being a virgin. It's about going the extra mile, even in the virginity, because trust me, there are lots of virgins out there who do worse things than people who are not even virgins anymore. Like, I mean, people who have their hymens. There's some people who have their hymens and they're doing terrible things, things which are worst. But anyways, being a virgin is a plus because if it was mentioned here, it's not everybody who was getting married that it was mentioned that they have, they were virgins and they had never been with men. It means it's a plus. It was it was an addition. It was it was a plus. So if you are, kudos to you. I'm really I dock my heart for you and keep yourself. It is worth it. Let nobody deceive you. People will say all kinds of funny things. They'll tell you how science say, biology says, yam done, yam no done. Don't be moved. Don't be moved. Keep yourself. You've kept yourself this far. Keep yourself. Your husband is going to be proud of you. God is going to be proud of you. You're going to be proud of yourself, my dear. You're going to be proud of yourself. And the truth is the blunt truth. When you're in a relationship and sex is involved, it's hard to break away even when you know that relationship is not good for you. But when it's not involved, the breakaway is painful, but it's not as painful. It's not as painful and it's not as difficult. And you wonder why people go back to their exes and all that because sex is not just sex as people think. It's a bond. It's a covenant you're making with people. You're bonding. You're sharing yourself, your body. You're sharing spirits, bodies, stuff, you know. You're sharing a whole lot. And that's why people still have these bonds with some of the people. And then you hear ladies going back to their exes and men going back to their exes and all that. And you're wondering why? It's because of the bond. It's because of the covenant, you know. So we need to be very, very careful, Okay. And so that goes on and then they're talking about, um, so this girl had this extra, you know, there was this extra thing she could do and the man went with the fleece. So, um, the Holy Spirit was telling me once that fleeces are for babies, baby Christians. He expects me. So I made a fleece one time and it didn't work. And I was thinking like, okay, so it means that God was not involved. And God later on told me that he was involved. That fleece didn't work because he wanted me to learn to listen to him and know that he's the one speaking without necessarily putting out the fleece. He expects that I should have grown, grown enough to be able to know that this is him speaking without having to put a fleece out there. Confirmations are different, you know. Confirmations are different from fleeces. Even though fleeces are a kind of confirmation, though, to so to speak, they're a kind of confirmation. But there are different kinds of confirmations that doesn't necessarily need you to say, oh, this person has to do, I heard about someone who said a woman of God should do gymnastic, like, you know, cartwheel, the thing you turn and your legs are in the air and stuff and your hands are on the ground. The woman of God had to do a cartwheel on the pulpit. That's what an unbeliever was getting into a, an auditorium saying that he doesn't believe there's God. And if there's truly God and God can do and undo, then he will give his life to Christ. Let the woman of God on the pulpit do cartwheel. People were confused. I mean, the church was in total confusion. And as the church was in total confusion, they were trying to carry the woman of God in and everything. 
the guy just started running front ahead to the pulpit to go and tell them that he was the one that he just got in here and he says that he doesn't believe God exists and all that and he gave the testimony and that's how the thing went on. So fleeces work, do they do work. That's why he gave a fleece and said, okay, if the person comes and I say this and then this, this, this happens, then it's the person. And she did. And they went and officially took them from the family, officially took her from the family. Sometimes negotiations are very important. Go and do things the right way. These people wanted that girl to stay for another 10 days, but he negotiated and pleaded and pleaded, you know. Some people would just be like, no, um, um, bride price and dowry is very expensive. Can we stay is sin. It's fornication. Can we stay is fornication. We will not be pampering this thing and calling them any kind of name. Because when we begin to call them those nice and sweet names, people just keep living in sin. Thinking it's okay. It's not okay. Go and take the girl officially. Negotiate. Negotiate. He negotiated. He said, no, he cannot stay there some more. He wants to go. His, his master needs this thing to be done and done in time and all that. Well, it looks like in the days of um, Jacob, he didn't know how to negotiate so much. So he was taken advantage of. Okay, so he went on and went on. And Rebecca was very hardworking. He was, she was a virtuous woman. She was at her place of purpose. She was doing what she normally do, does. You know, the ladies were supposed to go out in the evening to go and carry water. So, ladies, be in your place of purpose. Stop looking for the men. The men are supposed to be looking for you. It's he who finds a wife. It's not she who finds a husband. It's he who finds a wife, finds a good thing. Let nobody deceive you. Be in the place of purpose. You will be found. Be in the place of purpose. You will be found. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. And yes, men, real women exist. Hardworking women exist. Women who are selfless and want to do the will of God. and want to do the God's purpose and God's will. They exist. And yes, women, real men exist. Men who don't cheat. Men who don't lie. Men who don't adulterate. Men who don't fornicate. They exist. Oh, yes, they do. I know a number of them. They do. Okay, so she goes on she's, and they go to the parents and they do everything officially and then they take her and they're going. And then they see this man. That was Isaac as well in the place of purpose, doing his work and everything. And then he saw his wife. Man, see, these things work. When God tells us to be where we're supposed to be, the time we're supposed to be there, these things work. They work. Let's believe God and believe and, and do these things right, people. Let's do these things right. Okay. And then she now goes and um, consummating, they say, and he became his wife. Consummating is what actually makes marriage marriage. So there are a lot of people who are kind of married. But they don't have official documents because they've already consummated their relationship. That's marriage, basically. When the relationship has been consummated, that's when it's officially marriage. That paper and all that thing is not really, really the thing. When the marriage has been consummated, that's when it's called marriage. Even biblical um, explanations here say, and he became his wife. And he became his wife. And he became his wife. Just like that. So um, they go on and then um, he thanks God anyway. He thanks God that God had actually prospered him, you know. <laughs> at some point, I love the way he said it. He said, and he stood there and was staring at her to be sure that it was God. You know how he will be thinking, let me go and help out. No. Let me see whether she will finish this work. Because maybe along the line she might give up that. Ah, she's exhausted. She's tired. So it's really not God. You know, kind of thing. It was God already. When God starts a work, he finishes it. He doesn't play about it. And the girl happily did it. When you're fulfilling your purpose, you're happy because that's what you do. You know, I I, I, I watched the movie yesterday, Resolute, on um, Abayomi, Ad, Ad, Adbegboye. 
I, I don't know how to pronounce his second name, but on the Abaya Me channel, um, Gospel TV, Film TV, I watched the, this and he was saying that people are asking him, don't you get tired? It's what you love. So as you're doing it, you can't be tired of what you love. I can talk like forever. Sincerely speaking, I can just be here talking the Bible, talking the word of God, encouraging people, telling my story and all. I can be here for like, if I'm supposed to just sit here and sit here, like they can bring me food and I'm eating and then I'm talking and I can stay here for as long as I, I can say, as long as God gives me strength and gives me grace to stay, I can stay talking. That's the truth. So when you're doing what you're passionate about, when, when it's your purpose, when it's your calling, you do it effortlessly. Sometimes we struggle so much because we're doing what we're not supposed to be doing. We're probably just doing what is trending. We're probably just doing what our parents or our brothers or our sister or the world or the society wants us to be doing. Yeah, trust me. If I was told somehow that I was going to be able to do a chapter a day every single day, I would have probably doubted. Sincerely speaking, I would have probably doubted. But I've been so worried and so scared about Psalms 119. Is this Psalms 119? Yeah, I think that has about 150 verses. Yeah, I've been worried sick about it. I was worried about Revelations. Today I just read 60 verses. There was some other day, I don't know which chapter or which book that had 80 something verses. And we read it nonstop. I mean, I didn't choke like I choked on this one this time around. I didn't. So. When you're doing what you're doing, you're just passionate about it. You just go all out. You put your best. You put it in your all. And you just get to do it. So, I don't know. A lot of times, um, we kind of feel like, oh, people are doing these things just because they have the opportunity. They have the energy. No, sometimes they don't really have the energy. I've told you all sometimes here. I feel like I'm not going to do a chapter a day. And then, I just energy just comes from somewhere. The Holy Spirit just, boom and pushes me and then I just wake up and then I start talking and I feel strength and strength enough so much so that when I get up from here I'm feeling like I'm supposed to just be tired back and then sleep or something mm -mm, doesn't work like that I feel like I want to still do more I feel like I want to push again I want to oh my god it's so beautiful so when God is in it there's no limit when God is in a matter there's no limit and so he got Abraham the wife and kept his part of the bagging and the lady covered herself. You know, there was really much respect and honor in those days. You know, so much respect and honor. But today, our bodies are literally outside. We're literally naked. Like, we're putting all our private parts out there in the public. And this woman, she was probably covered, really covered. But she still took a veil and covered herself. Just because she was in the presence of Isaac. Oh my God. I mean, we need to learn from these people. I'm not saying that you should go now and do like cover your head with all like, no, 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 no. You can still be properly and beautifully and classily dressed, but covered properly. You're properly covered. All this showing off of breasts, tummy and all that. It's not, it's not the thing. It's not the thing. Say, um, say guys, all these things you're advising girls to wear girls that you can take to parties and all and you're not advising your sister to do it's not good though <laughs> i remember talking to a friend of mine um recently and we're talking about this whole thing about men cheating and stuff like that and i'm like okay you're sounding like this seems okay what would you tell your daughter who comes to you and tells you that a man is treating her just the way you're treating this other woman what would you tell her says um she's not going to break down she's not going to be I said, that's what you're thinking. You're talking from the man's perspective. I'm talking from the lady's perspective. It hurts. You cannot be telling me. It's not even possible that you're telling me that you love me and then you're sleeping around with other women. It is not possible. You don't love me. That's not love. Love doesn't hurt the one they love. Love doesn't hurt. And when I started, because when I was just trying to bring him to to understand that if that thing wasn't right, he wasn't getting it. Now I said, you love your daughter so much, right? You can do anything. You can. 
He says, I can even kill for my daughter. I was like, okay, I'm getting him there. I'm getting him there. I said, okay, so if some man is doing this thing to your daughter and your daughter comes and reports to you, what are you going to tell him? You're going to tell her to mind her business, right? That she stop poking in the man's business and just be, right? I said, no, that she must have trained her and everything. And the, the daughter cannot even get into that kind of scenario. I said, that's what you're saying. I'm sure this lady that is also with you and is complaining should have also been taught by her parents. I said, me who got into an abusive relationship, I've never seen my parents in an abusive relationship, but I was in one. My parents had never taught me to be in an abusive relationship. When I was growing up, they treated me right. They loved me. I had a love from mother and father. All my parents, my aunties and uncles, they showed me love. I'd never known anything that was close to abuse, nothing. But there I was in an abusive relationship. Will it be that it's my family that taught me? It's my family that they... It's just because when you get to a particular age, there's some things that you do. When you're not in that situation, you always have a sane way of talking like, that can happen to me. I can do that. I can, blah, 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 blah. and you're just bluffing. If it's not God, my dear, you're so going to fall for it. And I was even a Christian. I was more strict and stringent when I was an unbeliever. When I became a Christian, I think for some reason I let my God down, thinking that it was just going to be like that, you know, because you're a child of God, some kinds of things don't happen to you. And until it started happening to me, then I knew that the scripture that says walk out your salvation of fear and trembling means you have a part to play it's not just gonna happen like that so i was asking him, like if your daughter and then he was like so i got to a point i'm like okay when you begin to teach your daughter and you begin to make her to be that stiff she will not talk about it to anybody she'll end up in depression and she might end up killing herself why did i not kill myself the only reason why i didn't kill myself was because i had become born again and i had seen in the bible that if you commit suicide, you're going to hellfire. And I've read about what hellfire is, how it's going to look like. And I knew that the pain that I was feeling, it was painful and hurtful. It was like my heart was going to explode or just, it was just going to be, it, it was just going to shred into pieces. But I knew that even that pain I was feeling right at that time was nothing compared to what I was going to feel in hell if I ended up in hell. So I had to do something about it. That's how I never killed myself. You all should have been talking about me in past tense. I probably should not have even been talking about me because what had I done then? Nothing. Maybe some people might talk about me if I die today. Some people might talk about me because they're coming for a chapter a day. That's all. So, oh, I remember. I know that girl. She was doing a chapter a day. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord. Thank God for her. Thank God for her life. I hope that she's in the safe hands. I'll be in safe hands by the grace of God. I'm also trusting God and working my salvation and with fear and trembling and telling God to examine me to check my life every single day as well because it's no jokes. It's no jokes, people. You can have it all and then end up being a castaway. So I don't want to be a castaway. So I need to take myself. I need to take care of myself. I need to follow what God is telling me and what God is teaching me and do it right. So people, you too need to do that. You too need to do that. You also need to do that. So be in the place of purpose. Let nobody deceive you. When you're in the place of purpose, things are going to just fall in place. Fulfill purpose. You came to earth to fulfill a purpose. You came to earth as a solution to a problem. Let no one make you feel less than that. Let nobody feel, make you feel like you're nobody. You're useless. You're not. God, God, God never creates anything that is not beautiful. He never, and God doesn't get bored. He doesn't just sit in heaven and he gets bored and then he decides to send you on earth. He says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. And I knew what I had planned and purposed and prepared for you. So go back to God and ask him. Go back to God and ask him. And when he tells you, be in the place of purpose, and these things and these people are going to find you. They would find you. Don't be distracted. So people, thank you so, so much. It has been a beautiful day on a chapter a day. I'm really, really excited. And because my kid sister was born today and it doubles as a wedding anniversary. I'm really, really excited. Happy anniversary to you, darling. Tweeny of life. You know, we kind of twinship. We kind of do some kind of twinship. Our own twinnies is kind of funny because one is a bigger, bigger, way bigger in age. Not just um, 
hours like i'm the bigger one like by two years mm -hmm. and so um happy anniversary to you god bless your family and happy birthday to you as well so i always get to say i love you all so very much but god loves you way more get to like share and subscribe don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all the updates each time we we'll upload a new video or we get to go live thank you for always coming i really do appreciate you i wish my heart could be open so you see how grateful i am how happy i am and all that but my heart can be opened anyways you just have to believe that i say i really really appreciate you so let's pray lord thank you for your word let this word be engrafted on the fleshly tables of our heart to bring transformation to bring healing deliverance lord cause us to be doers of the word not hearers only because doing the word brings blessings cause us to leave the word to the letter and let's be able to have a relationship with you that will cause you to minister to us, Rema, that only you can give to us at every point in time in our lives. Even this season, Lord, sorry, we need a spirit of discernment. Release upon us your spirit of discernment to be able to know the real and the fake and to be able to stay focused on the real. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because I know you always hear an answer. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. If you're here today and I didn't say hello to you, forgive me. Like I said, sometimes our internet acts up like that. And things are popping up, but I can't see them. I'm really sorry. Until tomorrow, it's going to be Revel Genesis chapter 25. It's a silver jubilee tomorrow. Silver jubilee Genesis. So, let's study ahead of time. And we'll come back here tomorrow and have a swell time together. Ciao, ciao.